hindering Biden that don't enable him to distance from Trump? What are those two things? Yeah. Good morning, Michael. And interesting uh, analysis there. Look, I think there are four core factors that are shaping the environment for 24 that have uh, changed the world uh, since uh, Trump and Biden faced each other the first time in 2020. The two big factors that are hurting Biden, the headwinds for him are, as you said, the concerns about his age, three quarters of Americans saying he's too old to do the job for a second term and concerns about inflation. Um, uh, you know, I talked to Stanley Greenberg, a longtime Democratic pollster since the 80s. He's polled for parties all over the world. Uh, and he points out that uh, the destabilizing effect of inflation lasts longer in the minds and in the, in the finances of average voters than political leaders often recognize. And then, though, there are two fact, big factors on the other side uh, that are weakening Trump. Uh, and one of those is abortion, the, the desire, the, the majority support for maintaining legal abortion. And the second really is insurrection and democracy, the, the belief that he, the majority belief in the public that his actions after 2020 were illegal and unconstitutional. And when you take age and inflation on one side uh, and abortion and insurrection on the other side, what you see right now is that sums the stalemate. With regard to Biden, here's what you wrote in part. You said, the other big change weakening Democrats is that Biden is older now. In polls, yeah. as many as three quarters of Americans have said they believe Biden is too old to serve effectively as president. Far fewer Americans express that concern about Trump, though he's only three years younger than Biden. Images of Biden yeah. walking stiffly or clips of him intermittently mingling his sentence, mangling his sentences, which he's prone to do even when younger, leave many Democratic strategists in a perpetual state of anxiety, fearful that the president is one slip, physical or verbal, away from political disaster. Are you convinced, Ron Brownstein, that he will be the Democratic nominee? Well, I think, I, 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 no, well, look, we don't, know, we don't know what's going on in his mind, but I think the vast, vast majority of Democrats believe that Biden is going to be the nominee and they have to figure out a way to make uh, this work with him on the top of the ticket. You know, first of all, Biden has been a more effective legislative president than almost anyone expected. I think that's a, a fair statement. And he looks at those accomplishments and says, you know, uh, uh, I, I still have my fastball. Um, uh, second, I think the people, him and the people around him are much more worried than you suggested that a fight to succeed him would tear apart the Democratic Party uh, precisely as it needs to go up the, against what I think virtually all Democrats and many non-Democrats view as an existential threat to American democracy in Trump. And then third, you know, people don't lead, succeed, you know, hand over power as president very, uh, very often. Who was the last president did not run for re-election. I, I think it would be Calvin Coolidge, right? Did not seek at least one, uh, one re-election. So, you know, uh, there are lots of reasons uh, why he should consider stepping off of the stage, but there are also some, some powerful ones for why he would stay in. And I think most Democrats believe that it's going to be the latter course and they've got to figure out a way to make this work. And by the way, if you look at the 2022 results, despite all of the problems that Biden faces. They were all present there in 2022 as well. And in the states that will likely decide the uh, the winner uh, next year, Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, among them, abortion and democracy did outweigh uh, inflation and concerns about Biden in those key governor's races. Ron, I fully recognize that many watching today are not going to appreciate my analysis. They're not going to yeah. appreciate the commentary, my effort to try and game out what might happen. For the record, I've spent the last several weeks talking about Trump and all of his legal impediments. But what if Donald Trump's nomination collapses yeah. under the weight of the indictments, right, next spring? The argument then that, like, Joe Biden's the one who did and can beat Trump goes away. And if there's another Republican nominee, Democrats could find themselves locked in with the president of the United States. Yeah, look, there's a lot of concern about Biden running against a different Republican, especially one who is younger. I think Democrats six months ago thought DeSantis was clearly a tougher candidate to beat than Trump. I think many of them are not so sure right now that DeSantis is actually tougher than Trump. But look, Biden's vulnerabilities are real. I mean, you know, there is clearly a majority of the country that is very everything he's managed to achieve uh, in, in his in his first term, you know, especially with a big trio of uh, economically uh, related bills. That is real. I think Democrats are frustrated and a little unnerved 
by how sustained that resistance has proven in polls, despite all of the leak growing for Trump. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, if you if you kind of consider the, the, the overall landscape against anyone other than Trump, it could be difficult. But Trump sure looks like a commanding favorite right now in the Republican race. Quick final comment relative to the Republican race. Uh, we showed that Wall Street Journal poll that shows Trump still maintaining his, his grasp on the GOP. Is that a reflection of an adherence to him or a reflection on that field that we all saw on the debate stage two weeks ago? I, I think it's, it's, it's more the former than the latter. I mean, I think what Trump has done is successfully uh, convinced that it wasn't really uh, hard that the majority of the Republican electorate to view the indictments the way he wants them to see them as an attack on them through him. Look, his message from the beginning has been that I am, in effect, the human wall that will protect you against all of the forces in society that uh, he alleges and many Republicans believe are trying to marginalize them. And he has basically made this just the latest manifestation of that. So supporting him in the primary becomes a way to stand up to the liberal establishment and the deep state and all of these uh, other forces. But it is worth yeah, noting I think that when you're you right. get inside the of the Republican coalition, there are a majority of voters who say they do not want Donald Trump to be president again if he is convicted of a, of a crime. So you've got two candidates who are defined more by their weaknesses than their strengths heading into this potential rematch. Ron, your piece today in The Atlantic, as usual, is terrific. Thank you for being here.